So I recently picked up this parabolic reflector off eBay. A uh, young lad was selling this who lives quite close to me and sadly his uh, father just recently passed away and he was clearing out his uh, father's garage and this was lying in there and uh, thankfully he put it on eBay. I spotted it and I picked it up. It, uh, it's a parabolic reflector and it is military. It's got a uh, date stamp on the back from 1981 as well as a uh, NATO stamp. And uh, it's like I said, it's solid aluminium, but it is quite light. But uh, it didn't come with any kind of element, it was just the reflector itself. Now, because this is a full 360 degree parabolic reflector, I wanted to make an element that uh, took advantage of that 360 degrees. Now, here I've got a uh, single biquad antenna. Now, if I uh, was to attach that, say, what would happen is because um, it's actually reflecting in the full 360 degrees because of the way the biquad is it would only be taking real advantage of reflections coming in here from the sides so from the top you wouldn't be getting the uh, best signal out of it that you could if you designed a antenna that took advantage of both the horizontal and the vertical so this seems to work really really well and uh, I can't find any reference to anything similar online and what I've decided to do is make a antenna uh, using this method of um, having the uh, two crossed over elements it's uh, not necessarily a true double biquad it's not going to be as powerful as a double biquad because it is uh, two separate elements at the end of the day but uh, I know a few people have been telling me especially for FPV where uh, you're actually tracking and you're using um, a linear um, antenna in instead of a circular polarized one what happens is when it's uh, jumping around into the horizontal and vertical you use a lose a little bit of uh, the frequency for your video image but hopefully with something like this you're not going to get that um, kind of uh, blocking out when it does change into a horizontal or a vertical pattern so this is the antenna that I'm going to show you how to build today and it's basically the same one that's on the, the parabola but uh, this one's got its own back reflector. So as I said, although uh, yes it looks like a double biquad, it's not. It's not going to perform the same as a double biquad because basically you've got two separate elements there. So uh, its performance is going to be very similar to a single biquad. And one more thing I just want to uh, make a note of is this is not a circular polarised antenna. Just because I've actually decided to go with the uh, elements uh, using this method as a circle, the uh, actual circle is one full wavelength long. It's uh, actually 126 millimetres for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, wavelength, but uh, it's not a circular polarised antenna. And another thing I like about this design is I've used the semi-rigid coax and uh, this is actually strong enough to actually hold the antenna in place so it actually supports its own weight so there's no need for a uh, tripod or anything like that. Now for the copper wire for the elements what I've got here is some household electrician's wire and uh, you can pick this up pretty cheap at most uh, hardware stores and sell it by the meter so you don't have to buy a whole lot of it and uh, it's around two millimeters in diameter which is about 14 SWG if you wanted to buy it on the reel. Now what I've done with the copper wire here I've stripped away quite a large part of the plastic sheath and uh, I've got about uh, 170 millimeters of exposed copper wire there and uh, what this actually does it gives me something to grip on this side where the uh, PVC uh, sheath is still in place and uh, I've exposed the copper wire here like I said and what I'm going to do I'm going to measure my full wavelength from the uh, end of the uh, plastic sheathing here down to here now the wavelength that I'm uh, going to be using is 126 millimeters so what I'm going to do I'm going to measure from here round to somewhere about here and use a little bit of uh, masking tape just to mask off where that um, wavelength actually ends so I know that the uh, copper wire that's exposed here all the way to the piece of my masking tape is exactly one wavelength at 126 millimeters. Now you can use a ruler to measure that out if you like but uh, what I've got here is some uh, plastic uh, tubing that uh, I've cut off exactly to uh, you know uh, wavelengths that I use quite often so I'm not messing around measuring things over and over again. 
so I've got my plastic tube in there and right at the start of that PVC there and what I'm going to do is a little bit of masking tape just on this side here so now when I remove my tubing I know that from there to there is exactly one wavelength so next what you're going to need to find is uh, some uh, plastic tubing this is waste pipe from the uh, plumbing aisle at my local hardware store and uh, the uh, diameter of this is 34 millimeters on its outside diameter and the circumference is slightly smaller than the uh, 126 millimeters that we need for the wavelength for the 2.4 gigahertz but uh, by the time we actually let go of this it will spring out a little bit more and it will be uh, quite close to uh, a perfect circle for this element so to get it nice and neat and straight you want to start roughly in the middle of your wire and just start to bend it around that plastic tubing like so and then what you can do is get your pliers and you've got this uh, piece of PVC here to help you grip so you don't need a second pair of pliers and just really give it a good tight pull and then what we can do is we can cut the copper wire here at the uh, beginning of the PVC and here just where the masking tape is and then we've got a nice circle that is exactly one full wavelength at 2.4 gigahertz so I'm now going to solder both elements together I'm just holding them down with some masking tape now the uh, gap between here wants to be around two millimeters and uh, what I like to do is solder it all in place first and then uh, uh, tidy that gap up then to two millimeters with the Dremel tool I just find it much easier to do it that way And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it cool down and then I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the opposite side. So now what I need to do is tidy up the gap between uh, the two elements. Now, like I said previously, it wants to be around 2 millimeters, no more than 2 millimeters. And uh, if you do get um, a little bit too much of a gap there, you can just squeeze it down a little bit to bring those uh, two ends closer together but uh, to get them nice and level I just use my Dremel tool with one of these cutting wheels and uh, just use the cutting wheel as a grinder to get a nice flat surface on uh, the ends of those elements there. So I now want to move on to the back reflector for this bicord antenna and what I've decided to do is cut out a circle of single sided copper clad PCB and it's exactly 98 millimeters in diameter you could also use a square as well it uh, really wouldn't make much difference but I just want to keep it all in a uh, circle uh, fashion because everything else is circle so it'll probably end up looking a little bit better but uh, what I've also got here is a piece of MDF and this is uh, 12 millimeters thick and I've cut that out the same way I've cut the PCB uh, clad board out here but just a slightly smaller diameter and uh, the reason why I want this is I want to, to be able to space out the distance from the elements to the reflector if uh, you've built a uh, more traditional bi-quad in the past or you've seen some of my other videos you'll know that the actual distance from the elements to the uh, back reflector wants to be in the uh, around 15 millimeters and that way you get the best SWR the lowest SWR and uh, a much more better performing antenna but uh, because we've got two elements we actually want to situate these somewhere around that uh, 15 millimeter distance so what I've got here my copper clad PCB here it's quite thin it's only one millimeter thick and I'm going to be flipping that over and having the reflector on the bottom so we've got the uh, one millimeter of the fiberglass board here and I've got my 12 millimeter thick MDF I'll place that on top and then what I'll do is I'll attach my first element so we've now got the first element 13 millimeters away from the back reflector and I've got an M12 nylon washer here and that's two millimeters thick and I'm going to use that as a spacer uh, so the two elements don't actually touch 
and the second element will go on top of that spacer so the first element is actually 13 millimeters away from that reflector and the second element is 17 millimeters so it's around the middle of that SWR so this should work out fine now to prepare the coax to attach to this antenna what I've actually gone ahead and done is I've cut away 15 millimeters of the outer sleeve to expose 15 millimeters of that inner core there and I've also cut a uh, little trench in the side of the outer sleeve here which is about six millimeters long and what that will allow me to do is I've got some copper wire here just again some uh, really cheap uh, inexpensive uh, household electrical wire and uh, it's about the same kind of diameter as that uh, inner core and I'm going to attach it about here and solder it in place into that little trench there and that will give me two uh, rigid um, pieces of wire that can actually solder my biquad antenna to. So I finished preparing the coax and what I did just soldered it in place and then I tidied it up with the uh, Dremel tool. Now I've used some epoxy to secure the MDF disc in place and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually solder the uh, coax directly to this reflector here. Although the hole's a little bit big it is possible to build up solder and actually uh, connect it with solder. It's uh, a lot stronger than actually using glue and it also actually needs to have a physical connection from the uh, coax here to this back reflector. And you also want to attach it so the coax is nice and level with that MDF disc there. So you've got just got your two actual solid cores there that you're going to solder onto, peeking through that hole. So I've soldered the coax so it's uh, now physically making contact with that reflector and it's nice and solid in place. So we can actually bend this coax without any risk of it uh, coming away from here. Now I've also bent the signal wires here so they actually line up better with the two holes that I've uh, drilled in the element and uh, what will happen is, is when I put this element in place it now lies completely flat on top of that MDF. Now I'm going to solder the first element in place and when I've done that I'm also going to uh, put some epoxy on the elements here and here where it overlaps the MDF just so it's nice and solid and rigid and uh, it's connected down to that MDF so it's not going to move anywhere. So next I'm going to epoxy this washer in place just laid on top of that first element there and what that will allow me to do then is place the second element on top so it's nice and level and obviously it's acting as an insulator so the two elements aren't touching. So I'm now ready to seat that second element so what I'm doing I'm just bending the pins just to make fitting it in place a little bit easier. So I've filled that void with uh, some epoxy and I've also drizzled some on top of the elements here where they come in contact with that nylon washer just to uh, add a little bit of extra strength there but um, the uh, solder points for the elements are now almost potted so they're well protected so what I'm going to do now is just give it a uh, coat of paint. So a quick test, I've got the uh, test router about 45 metres away going through four brick walls and I've got a standard rubber duck antenna on here at the minute and it's coming in about 55 percent so it's picking up my test router from 45 meters away four brick walls and it's coming in about 55 percent which is uh, what you'd expect for one of those rubber duck antennas so I'm going to swap it out now for the bi quad and it's slowly jumping up so about 85 percent so that's a big increase on a uh, normal rubber duck antenna which to be honest you would expect from a bi quad 
And also remember, although this has got two elements, it's not actually a double biquad. It's um, a biquad that works in the horizontal and the vertical, so it's actually two separate elements. It's not joined together like a double biquad. So its performance will be roughly the same as a single biquad, but the difference is with this one, it works in both the horizontal and the vertical without having to move your antenna. So as you can see in that test, it's not a bad little performer, especially when you're uh, comparing it to one of these rubber duck antennas. And uh, it uh, it hasn't come out too bad at all. It sits uh, on that uh, semi-rigid coax quite nicely. It holds its uh, own weight. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. But uh, just remember, it is only a single bi-quad. It's uh, just got two separate elements. They're not joined together like a double bi-quad. So you're not going to get that performance. But what you do get is the horizontal and the uh, vertical plane there. So I hope you enjoyed that video and you've got something out of it and please by all means uh, give it a thumbs up if you did, it really does help and uh, drop a comment below. I uh, have been really really busy at work this past uh, probably getting on for six weeks now and uh, I've really been swamped under there but uh, I am hopefully going to have some free time over the next few months to get some videos up and uh, I've also taken a couple of weeks out to actually tidy this place up because coming on from work on a night and then actually shooting a video I was never putting anything away and it did get uh, extremely messy and the shop hopefully will be up in the next six weeks my uh, eldest son is actually doing that for me he does do it for a living as well and uh, he's just got a, a, an extremely big project that uh, he's working on at the minute that he's got to get out of the way over the next couple of weeks but hopefully there'll be uh, some antennas for sale soon on the shop and I have got some uh, antennas to ship out to people that I have promised them to it's just that I've been so busy at work so I apologize but uh, I will be shipping out any antennas that I promised to people this weekend so hopefully we'll be back to normal soon so as I say I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one